Go. Hello and welcome to the Aiton Inquisition, where we spend a little bit of time getting to know the populace of the kingdom of Aitonville. We're your hosts, Morgan and Elizabeth, king and queen, during these trying times of plague. This evening, we are joined by His Grace, Duke Mark. Your Grace, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, firstly, I guess I would tell you about myself as I'm a native Arizonan. My, my family uh, homesteaded here in 1900. I used to still live on the same homestead there in uh, the Buckeye Goodyear area. Um, so uh, my, my family has been here a long time. So I'm an Arizonan. So I like I like the Kingdom of Aintville because it's all Arizona. So <laughs> that, that's, uh, you know, so I grew up in Arizona. I went to school in Arizona. I've done almost everything I've done had been Arizona linked in one, one form or another. Um, so we, we got that. An interesting thing is the um, reason I got in the SCA was the, the Estrella War was at Estrella Park. And you can actually see Estrella Park from our farm. And my mom actually saw the, the first Estrella War. She saw the fighting. And they were talking to me, trying to talk me out of playing football anymore. And I go, son, I think I see something you may like. <laughs> it was between this d d thing and that football. So go check it out. Well. Being a clever lady, she was right. I, I liked it. Like this, this is a lot of fun. So that's kind of how I got in, uh, started the SEA. I went over that first trail of war. I watched them fight and, I, and uh, couldn't wait to get started myself. Like that, that's how it kind of started out. So is, uh, is Aidenville the only game you played in? Um, through my, my career, I mean, I was Aidenville. I, I, I did a lot of going to inner kingdom wars, my early career. Uh, Basic, mostly in uh, Kaid and some, some Outland events. And, you know, I think the, you know, I went to Penzik a half dozen times, that, that, that kind of stuff. But uh, I, I would say here in the, the Southwest corridor area is mostly where I've always been. Kaid, Outlands, uh, Artemisia, and uh, Aidenville. So, so when I was uh, king, Artemisia was part of the kingdom, so. Crazy. <laughs> I can't even imagine. <laughs> Well, so, it was actually kind of fun, you know, so I was, young, you know, I was a young guy and getting to go up into Montana and Utah and Idaho, places I probably wouldn't have gone to. So meet the people up there and, you know, they had that reimbursement, they paid half. So it was a pretty good deal, I thought. It's like, oh, so, yeah, so I took advantage of it and it was fun. So it was, it was, it, I would say very rewarding. But, uh, yeah, we've definitely <laughs> enjoyed traveling throughout the different rains and getting to know people everywhere. So I understand that. Absolutely. Yeah, the people are nice when you when you, you you know you took your time to to go to their area and it was you know several hundred miles away. I think they really appreciated your effort, mm -hmm. so it was, it was always very beneficial. Yeah. Do you have a favorite story from the Wayback Machine? <laughs> do I have a favorite story from the Wayback Machine? Well, I, I do have a story that I think would people would you know would find some benefit in is uh, so when I got in. You know, I did this fighting thing and I was having fun and everything. And, and uh, I couldn't figure out how to do this whole night gig. It's like we're fighting and it's like, you know, and I was talking to Jonathan White Wolf and he just laughed like, yeah, you're a good fighter, but you're not going to get any farther ahead. And it went, and the nights wouldn't kind of tell, give me the next link step ahead. So I, I was kind of frustrated. It's like, well, I'm pretty good at this fighting thing, but I can't get become a knight. And I was talking to Trelon. I was like, I don't know what to do. He's like, I think I have to do the squire thing. And it's like, well, normally you got to. It's like, well, nobody's really kind of explained the process to me. You know, I'm not like a dumb guy, but you know, it's like, all right, well, I'll explain the process. You want to be my squire? Like, what do I got to do? Uh, if you keep doing everything you're gonna do, you'll do just fine. It's like, all right, I'm in. And so, I, I don't think a lot of the the new the new personnel coming into the uh, the SCA, especially the fighters. I don't think they really realize the process of uh, finding people that can teach them the right skills, you know, or, or, you know, like, Hey, I'm in a fighter and I want to get me a knighthood. They don't, they don't land to the right people. It was like, uh, so, so, so what I try to do now, and I talk to the new people, I was like, Hey, I know you're a new fighter. We want to get you up about year one. When you're thinking about being a squire, come talk to me and I'll help you find a knight, you know? And it's like, and I tell this when I first meet him, and it's like, don't pick one early. Let's, 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 let's wait a year or so. And uh, 
So let's pick, pick some, you know, if you need some help, I'll help you find somebody that the personalities match up and so we can be successful. And so I think uh, when we've set people up for success, uh, people are happier, stick around and, uh, you know, success breeds happiness. So yeah. that, that's not my story. It was, was kind of cool. It was like, yeah, oh, just, just you know, throw on. He was like, oh, you don't have to do anything else. Just, just come here. And the coolest thing is, like, like the next week, I got a new costume out of the whole gig. He's like, oh, this squire thing is, I really like it. <laughs> right? right? It's probably me being his squire. was probably the most fun I had in the whole lesson. It was, it was a lot of fun. He was a good teacher. And uh, so that, that's well, why. Well, and when you get to have that kind of an experience, it, it helps you when you get to that point in your SCA where you have a squire. Right. You know, you can remember what. What, why it was fun and try to make it fun for them. Yeah, my, my most philosophy now when I talk to the, talk to, you know, people in the SCA, it's like, if you're not having fun, why are you here? And if you're not having fun, what can we do to change what's going on? You know, this is our, this is our time off, you know, and you, people need to have fun in their time off. And if you're not having fun, they're, 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 we need to, to investigate and find what's the problem. You know, and it's like, and I think if that, that message goes out to more SCAers, more SCAers have fun and uh, the, the club grows, you know, so that, that's what I would tell people, like, hey, if you're not having fun, figure it out, you know, ask people what, what's going well, on. There's Stop certainly, there's, there's probably another path that suits you better that could still be part of the SCA. Right. So it's a, it's a lot of fun. So. so Tell us a little bit about your your persona and your heraldry. Like, how did you come across? How did you come about your heraldry? Okay, okay. So I'll, I'll start with uh, my heraldry. So, um, so I, I read a lot of medieval books and about people picking their heraldry out. And so I came from a farm, and it's like, so the the coolest bird, the coolest animal on our, on our farm every year that shows up is a bald eagle. And it's like people are like. There's actually a bald eagle in uh, Buckeye, Arizona. It's like, yeah, I have pictures of them right on our farm. So it was like the cool, the coolest uh, beast on the farm. It would have been, or it would have been a horse or something like that. But that's why I picked an eagle. It's like that was the coolest beast on our farm. So it's like, all right, we'll put an eagle on there. And uh, I always liked red and blue. Red is my favorite color, and blue is kind of there. So I, so I um, submitted a couple different devices, and. Uh, uh, Joe Bethencourt, I also Lockley, he actually came up with the background. And it's like, like he told me, he's like, Mark, I'm not sure many eagles will pass, but I think this will. And what he had, he had done, he, was, he had actually had the, the blue and the red were, were uh, um, backwards. I go, Joe, that, that looks like the American flag. <laughs> <laughs> Off the red and the blue, I, like, I want more red anyway. And when we submitted it, and uh, it sat there forever until they become king. They got past them like, uh oh, quickly. Like, all right, you're king now. Your device has to be passed. Like, <laughs> it was passed. Like, like oh, that's, that's nifty. You know, so I'll maybe. Go. Good thing I kind of had it uh, spray painted on my shield and everything. But, uh, right. but yeah, it took me and King to get it actually passed. <laughs> I kind of giggled about that. I was like, oh, okay. you know, so, so that, that, that's how I kind of picked, uh, picked my colors. And, uh, it's interesting you know, where I live. All the schools have birds for their uh, eagles and hawks. Where, but uh, so that that's how I picked it. It was the coolest beast on the farm. And uh, I like it. So you've been doing this for a minute. Mm -hmm. Do you have any goals still in the SCA? Um, I, I don't really have any goals in the SCA except to have fun. I I do. I do have goals where I like to uh, train um, uh, individuals how to fight. And I do have an unwritten goal that, so we train a lot of folks that are, are fighter practices. I have a goal of one night a year. And it's like, if I don't make it, no biggie. And you know, and it's like, but I don't want to make it if the person's not, not uh, you know, if we don't have anybody ready, then we don't have anybody ready. But I like to, have, at our fighter practice, I like to have a, train of people getting better and right now I, th I think we have that we have a lot of people working hard and they're moving up in their, their skill level and uh so 
I guess that'd be the closest thing to I have a goal as a goal besides just having a good time, you know, and uh, interacting and that kind of thing. But I don't know. I don't know if anybody would really like like think that goal is you know, might be a little arrogant goal, but uh, but that's my personal goal to get one guy a night of the year or, or gal. You know, first thing, if you don't set a goal that is tough, then it, it, what's the point? Like you should be pushing yourself. Right. And your goal pushes you and it pushes other individuals. So I think it's I think it's a good goal. I'd like to see more people putting the time in. And I think sometimes all they need is that right person bringing them along. And I think sometimes that's where we fall short. And so... I yeah, appreciate yeah. the work you're doing. It, it, it's fun. I, I I like doing it. It's uh, very gratifying to see them get uh, the personnel get bigger, better. You know, it's like, and normally that means better. That means they're they're whacking me more. It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. You know, someone's like, yeah, you're hitting me more. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I don't think I like it much, but but then you right. get better. Yep, and they, they get better, and it's it, you know, it's like co being the coach and your team winning and the whole the whole nine yards. So. Uh, I've done a lot of training in the army. That was what, mostly my job most of the time. And so it's just kind of, when I was good at it there, and it's like, that's why they kept me at it most of the time. But it, it, it's gratifying to see people improve. Well, yeah, uh, I mean, personal success can be amazing, but having knowing that you took part in helping somebody else succeed, I think it actually is more rewarding. Mm -hmm. so, but it, it's fun. So what is something you've done in your time in the SCA that you're especially proud of? Ooh, that's a hard question. Um, it gets harder from here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It's like what I'm especially proud of. I, um, that's a tough question. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not sure I can give you a good answer on that. It's like uh, what I'm especially proud of. Um, <laughs> Oh uh, man, you're that you you might have, you might have stumped me there. It's like there's a lot of things I'm happy with, but especially proud of. I'd go bragging everywhere. It's like I don't know. It's, I'm just myself. It's like I try hard at everything, and and uh, but uh, I I think I'm just happy with everything, and no no one in particular thing. Sorry. Fair. Oh. Uh, uh, is there anything that you really love doing that is not part of your normal path? Is there anything I like doing that's not my normal path? Past? So not fighting. Oh, um, I play a lot of war games. I really like playing war games. So you know that that's what I like to do. You know, catch me all the time playing war games or playing dominoes with the wife for you know whoever else I can trick into playing games. I, I like playing games. You know, so that that's what I like. I have fun doing that. Okay. So. Is there something in the something that's that falls under the envelope of the SCA that you'd like to try that you haven't yet? Well, I would like to be a good painter, but uh, I've tried for like you know at least forty years to be a good painter, and uh, <laughs> 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 it's like you know I'm not a very good painter. I can paint little miniatures, but that doesn't count. <laughs> but uh, I'd like to be a good painter, but I'm not. <laughs> um. What would you say that you're known for? Well, I think I'm probably known for fighting, so going out in the field and fighting. So that's what I think I'd probably be uh, known for. But, uh, so I'd like to be known for as a nice person, but probably known for being a little ornery and uh, going out and fighting. Asrap is, I believe, the particular thing. Yeah, you know, when we're, when we're, when we're fighting hard, and uh, I, I, I like to fight people, um, so, so I have different, different, different ideas on fighting. So when I'm teaching somebody, I like to fight at a level that they, they can be competitive at, but I most enjoy fighting somebody that can, that can actually beat me. And then it's like fun. It's like, if the other guy can't really beat you, it's not that fun. But when he can really put the whip on you, then it's like, it, it makes you fight. And it, it you know, and that's where you hear all, all those stories. Like, because when you're fighting somebody good, you have to fight all out. And they, which means you're getting hit hard, they're getting hit hard. And, and what I like about the SCA is you can go out and fight out all as hard as you want. And next thing you know, you're drinking a beer with the guy and you're, you're bragging to each other, like, yeah, you put this bruise on me and ah, I got you there. And so I, I like to, I, 
like that camaraderie of, uh, you know, having fierce competition and then uh, fierce loyalty and buying each other beers and stuff like that. That That's very rewarding. So. It, it is funny when you get to a certain level and all you're looking for is that fight you can't win so that you have to work and learn new things. Yep. And I think there's a lot of people don't understand that that's, that's a thing. Like you get there where you're like, I need a better fight. Exactly. And it's like, it's, it's just, it's just the way it is. It's, it's being competitive and we are, you know, being competitive means you want, you want to step that next step, which, which I find is old or being older now. It's uh, not as, not as fast. And so it, I have to be more of a chess player and I can't rely on being quick. And it's like, so it, it's still, still a lot of fun. And uh, I, sometimes I grumble like, damn it, I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all? Uh, so what advice would you give for a new member? So what advice I'd give for a new member is anybody, any, any advice I'd give to anything. It's like, I would sit and I would observe people. I would, uh, whatever, whatever thing I wanted to get into, I would find a like personality that was good at it and I'd find them as a mentor. Um, and then, you know, but, but definitely when you're, you get in, there's a, there's a lot of people trying to scoop you up and I'd be very patient who I, who I uh, joined up with. You know, it's not that anybody's bad, but getting the right, the right chemistry with uh, the people you're with makes a big difference and makes you more successful. Yeah. You know, finding a good mentor is, I think, key to, to a successful SCA career. You, you can see it. You know, you see the people come in, they get burned out real quick and they're bitter and they leave. And uh, that's unfortunate. And you can, so, so that's why when I talk to them, just like the fighter, it's just like, take your time, figure out who you like and, you know, and, and uh, get with them. And I, I think that that probably makes people more successful. And I would tell them, uh, I did, I would tell them in the regular world to do the same thing. Like, take your time, watch what's going on. Don't be in a, don't be in a hurry. So, yeah. so uh, who inspires you? Who inspires me? Well, my wife inspires me a lot. You know, she, I like it when she comes and watches me. It's like, I, I'll fight a little better when she's around, you know. I like, I like when my family members around. So I, I think they actually are the ones only that inspire me. You know, good friends of mine, they'll, they'll inspire me because you don't want to look poor in front of them. <laughs> and it's like, so, but uh, I think, I think that would be a pretty good answer there. You know, just, just, I would say my close friends and relatives, that the, those are the personnel that they, they inspire me, you know, so. So how have you been staying busy during the plague and, and retirement? You've got all of the free times. So, so during, so during the Corona, um, I, I have a little bit different view than I think finger most. I, I've gone to the NBC school and I understand germs probably a little better than most, but we didn't wait too long to have a, a private practice um, that we invite people that are adults that understood the risk and uh, to come practice. And, you know, we've had several, several of the, 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 per the personnel that come and fight with us been exposed, but they were very adult-like. They said, hey, I was exposed. I can't come for two weeks. And I was like, perfect. And so we've not had any, you know, so when we lost, we started fighting again in late March when they, when they did it. We kept, we kept all of our information, to ourselves and it's like you really didn't come to practice unless you were going to practice you know so we kind of kept it we kept the numbers down you know we asked the, the non the non-fighters not not to come to, to to keep the numbers low and we asked everybody to be very cognitive if they've been exposed you know and you know a handful of them had got the corona they called themselves out until they were clear and we didn't have a practice we didn't have a problem with if anybody uh, spreading corona at our practice, you know. And so I think if you treat things like an adult, you're responsible, you can get around stuff, you know. And so that, that's how we kept the practice going was people being responsible. I really, 
thing once we are able to gather and the people are more comfortable. Yes. So, okay, so um, you've seen a lot of traditions over the years. Uh, are there any that you feel like we've lost along the way that you'd like to see come back? Um, I would honestly say most of the stuff has been improved on. You know, it's like uh, the ambiance has been improved, uh, like from when I stepped up to when you, uh, the last couple of years I watched stepped up and improved. I've never been an ambiance guy. I'm just kind of like, hey, I'm here. No, oh, good. Okay, we're done. But you can look at it with a, you know, a global view or a bigger view and see how uh, people, there, there's a lot of people who enjoy the ambiance. And so I, I would say that's been a big improvement. The other biggest improvement I would say I've seen in the SCA, the fighting's gotten cleaner. It, it, people might bitch about it now, but overall I would say it's cleaner. You know, uh, I would say the fighters talk talk amongst themselves. Uh, the talk's a lot superior. People are standing up and saying yes, no. You, know, you ask them a question, they answer you. And, and so I, it's, it's, it's a lot cleaner than it was 30 years ago. That's, that's the easiest thing I can say on that. It's like, so, so, so that's, that's, that's good. That's good on everybody to, uh, to clean it up. So um, if, if you ask me some negatives on what I see is uh, the, the people my age, they don't have the hospitality they want to. And so, and I think they're older like me, you know, so I, I don't see the, it, I don't see the friendliness and the hospitality, which I want to solve, because I see a lot of us, hey, I'm really, really good at this, and you're a brand new guy, and you suck. And it's like, and I think that hurts the club. That's the only reason yeah. I mention that. I think that's one of the biggest things that hurts the club. It's like, why? I have this cool pavilion. Why'd you bring your dome tent? It's like, well, that's all I can afford. It's like, instead of like, well, let me help you out, you know, but, but so that, that, that's one of the big negatives I've seen, and which I didn't see 30 years ago. It was like, oh my God, I'm glad you're happier here with your dome tent. Who cares? Right. And you know, the brand new person that doesn't doesn't have the the coolest costume is like, well, let's don't let's don't get on them. Let's bring them up. You know. So you know, I, I think we need to get back to a little bit of that, which which would help a lot. So. Yeah, I, I found that it worked better to just in invite them, let them, let them have a good time. And most, most people will come on their own and be like, I want to, I want better costumes. You know, I want, I want a better camp. You right. let them come to it on their own. I mean, we all started in that dome tent, right? Like yeah. our first Estrella was a three man dome tent. It was horrible. This is terrible. But, <laughs> but you, you know exactly what I'm saying. You know? yeah. And then get into it. Yeah. Everybody gets to it, but it's, we got to help the new, the new, you just got to realize the new people are going to new people. And we want our club to go, we have to work with the new people to bring them up. Absolutely. Instead of castigating them down and going, you know, having, looking them down on our nose. And it's like, so that's one, really the only real negative I see, you know, and it's like, so then I, the, some of the areas I was like, wow, this is a, this is a nice change. I don't get in, I, it, it, the, the only other thing I wouldn't do that you guys do now, is it's a personal thing. Is if I knighted somebody, I'm not going to punch them in the face, or slap them on the face. They're getting punched in the chest, and it's just like, it's just a personal thing. It's like, man, nah, I'm not, I'm not swatting anybody in the face. <laughs> I, I, I will say from my side of it, as one of the the newer guys out there, uh, it's what's been asked for. Uh, uh, Nader wanted to be punched in the chest, so I punched him in the chest. But sure. the other ones all wanted to be smacked in the face. Yeah, so I, it's just one of my things. That like, man. Yeah. And probably because when I grew up in the, the fighting city of Buckeye, so we could fight with our cousins all we wanted. But as soon as somebody got hit in the face, everybody was in trouble. I mean, you, could beat, you could beat the tar out of each other, but as soon as you got hit in the face, you guys got in trouble. <laughs> so that might be that deep rooted thing in me. Yeah. <laughs> so do you have a favorite tradition? Favorite tradition? Hmm. Man, you ask hard questions. <laughs> a favorite tradition. I don't think I really have a favorite tradition, I don't think. But I do have a tradition that uh, 
I've got Duke Trelawan to go along with. It's at uh, Clo Clozier or Grand Court at uh, Estrella War to sit in the back and drink beer. Good tradition. Yeah. You look at the king. We're going to try that sometime. We did it when you were king and it was fun. <laughs> We sat in the back, we had a good time. We we could say we showed up at court, but we were in the far back. But yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. So I, I will say having a bar escort me into court and sit next to me during court was not a bad idea. Yeah. But but it'll be great to have you there drinking beer with us. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. So what is your favorite event? Probably Estrella War. I mean, you know, uh my, probably the, my favorite event I ever went to was uh, when I was still a squire and I got a month, knighted a couple months over. I went to Penzik with my knight. And uh, my, my good friends, uh, they're my squire brothers, um, Hal Brown and uh, Adam, Adam Morales, they were with me and, and uh, Trelon was with us. And it, that, that was my favorite event ever. So we had so much fun. It was just the only time we were having, we weren't having fun and we were sleeping. So it was, it was it was a great event. I would I would tell everybody like you need to go to the wars. You need to have your friends around you, and it, 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 it's it's a lot of fun. So I'm I'm always envious of the of the young guys, you know, like going going to the wars. Like like I can either like go partying or fight. And it's like I can't do both. <laughs> and they they can do all this stuff, and they're like oh, they're they're having a blast. It's like oh okay, okay they gotta have fun. So I'm a little envious of the young guys going having their their time at the war. It's like I, I just had a little, I just had a ball. It was fun. So uh, what what makes a perfect event? Well, oh, you'll have to say that again. What makes a perfect event for you? What makes a perfect event? Um, I, I would say that any event that the masses are all happy. You know, everybody had a good time. Uh, that's what I would say the perfect event is, you know, is when, it, when everybody's having a good time, it doesn't matter what you're really doing. And so that would, that would be the perfect event, what, whatever it may be, you know, everybody walks away with a big smile on their face. That's the perfect event. Hard to get there, but yeah. Okay. So is there anything that you would, that you think we should add to events that would make them better? Mm. I think it's, I already think it's a tough business running an event. And uh, I, I, I don't, I'm not really sure our SCA people are helping as much as they, the, all the members are helping them as much as they could in events. Uh, I do think maybe it's thrown on to a lower percentage of people than we should have setting them up and running them. And so, I, you know, I, we probably get, need to get more people involved in, in, in you know, either setting up the vans, running the vans, whatever, whatever. More people involved, I think, would, would, would help everybody. It seems, it seems to be running on too few of people. Mm -hmm. you know, it's always the, hey, it's throwing on these folks. And, uh, you, know, and you know, they're going to get wore out. So, but more people, the barrier. Yeah, I, I think, unfortunately, too, it ends up being like the same handful of people yeah. for each each group running all the events and that it can get taxing for sure. And I think that goes right right along with uh, grooming the young people in, into taking these events and, and showing them, you know, giving them some responsibility and, 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 and whatnot. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I, just as in any other organization, the personnel that have the, the authority and responsibility aren't always apt to want to give it up. And so getting them to give it up a little bit to some of these other folks, is, is not an easy job, but uh, it would, in the long run, it would actually help. Them. Yeah, I, I kind of get fond of asking younger people like what, what, they, what they think would make an event better and then challenge them to try to make that happen at the next event. I, I, that's, that, I think that's a good approach. You get the buy. Once you get the personal buy-in, they're going to help. They're going to put more effort into it. Yeah. You know? Well, I think too, it empowers them because a lot of them probably don't realize that they could make that make a change. Well, I, I don't think a lot of people realize what they could do 
You know, it's like me, me and my, my friends growing up in the NCA, we didn't even think about, we were fighters. We didn't know how good we are. We were fighting and this one guy actually won, won became Prince. It's like, we all looked at each other. It's like, well, oh, we beat that guy with ease. Why are we fighting in those tournaments? We didn't even realize we should. <laughs> so guy we could beat. And the next thing we knew, you know, my buddy won the next four of them. It's like, like yeah. And we all looked at each other. Yeah, we took turns. Four of us right in a row. We, like, nice. we knew we could do it, but we had to watch somebody else do it and go, hey, we could do that. Instead of somebody maybe should have said, well, you guys are good enough. Why don't, you, why don't you start entering them a little sooner? So, you know, a little, little mentoring. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, th I think there's too many people that talk about the, the, the gloom side of, of winning some of these tournaments, oh, yeah. you know, and not enough, and not enough time talking about the rewarding side of, of the, you know, I, I think, I, I think, you know, the leadership spots in SA can be very rewarding. Well, I, I sat in different positions. I had fun, you know, I, you know, I think the only time you really have a problem is probably when you have a, 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 an agenda that half the people don't like and half the people like. You know, if you go to those positions and have an agenda, like, well, you know, instead of just like, I am going to run it, I'm going to be fair, I'm going to do this stuff, you know. But if you have that agenda, normally that agenda get, gives you some problems. Yeah. It's, you, you get a lot of that. Think you know if you have expectations of like this is how it's going to be. That's not how it's going to be. It's never going to be that way. <laughs> You're just going to be unhappy. But if you just try to embrace the moments and focus on like for me, I try to focus on everybody else's happiness, and it it pulls me with it. So I think that's an outstanding approach. I I I do have one that I just thought about. You asked a question earlier. Yeah. And, uh, one of the things that you guys have changed, and I'm not sure I really like as much, is uh, so when we got knighted before, we didn't have to go through all this, you know, we didn't have a big party beforehand and we didn't sit in a tent and then people didn't ask us questions. I kind of liked the king calling me up and I got knighted right there, you know, so. So I'm not really sure is like which way is better. I do know, I definitely know somebody like the, the, the whole, you know, Come to my tent and talk to me, and but other guys like ah, I don't really don't like that. So, but so that was going back. I just thought about going back there. Yeah, the vigil, that's it called the vigil. There, there have been here and there where there isn't a vigil. Um, slide, Brian. Uh, I think a lot of times it, it comes down to the person. I know that they strayed away from that because I I play out of kingdom a lot too. And they knew if they just did an instant, a lot of my friends from out of kingdom wouldn't be there. Right. So having it at a later date, a, you know, a known later date allowed more people to be there. And I think that happens a lot. So that kind of goes back to one of the things that, that's changed. There were, there were, when, when I got knighted there, so nobody had a vision, you know, and it's like King called you up and you got, you got knighted, you got Pelican, then you got Laurel, you know, and, uh, I'm, I'm not saying either way is perfect, but it's like, uh, I, I can see, I, I would tailor to the personality of the individuals what I would do, so. Yep. But, uh, that's one of the things I've, you know, clicked in my head. I know it's longer, but uh, that's changed, so. <laughs> I want more stories. <laughs> I want more stories. I want more stories. Well, most of those stories are me getting in trouble. That's not <laughs> a bad thing. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes I think it's okay to, for people to hear that you could get in trouble and still have a successful SCA career. All right. Well, I'll, I'll tell you the last time I got in trouble. So it was, it was at a Pachero a couple of years ago, and we were, fight, we're fighting in a battle. And uh, I, I have a nine foot spear, and somehow there's like this opening to me. So I just go tromping through there. And what's in front of me is a bunch of coyote and uh, archers. So I just start pointing my spear at them, saying, you're dead, you're dead, dead. And I catch one out of the corner of my eye, going to shoot me with a crossbow. So I whip, whip my spear around and knock the crossbow out of their hand. Well, you thought I must have killed God or something, because that was the worst thing I could have ever done to a coyote and was knock their bow out of their hand instead of getting shot with arrow, within, within nine foot spear range. So 
I didn't know I was in trouble when it happened, but I, I did, just noticed there was a lot of crying and whatever going on. Like I kept fighting, whatever. Then, then, but I didn't notice when I was in trouble when this old marshal come up and called me your grace. I was like, uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> I think there's some trouble. So I got, I got marched over to the, the Kydian uh, <laughs> marshalette. And it's like, they asked me, so during the fighting, did you like strike a, you know, knock a bow out of their hand? And it's like, I go, Oh, yeah, I, I did. Did you do it on purpose? Like, I would say I probably did it on purpose. You know, it was kind of reflexes. I, I kind of explained it to them. It was like the reflexes. And I, I would say, to like, they go, you sure you did it on purpose? Like, yeah, I, I think I did it on purpose. And they told me, you know, that's against the rules. Like, really? <laughs> but they were going to, like, shoot me with that bow. And they're, like, that close. And, I mean, we're on the field. And you actually can't hit something somebody has? It's like, no. I was like, Wow, I guess I must have missed that somewhere on all my essay career. You can't whack the bow out of their hand. It's like, okay. And I was like, uh, well, all right, I, I did it. I didn't mean it, but okay, I know the rule now. And uh, so, and then, then as, as I'm finishing up with the marshal, I think we all, all calmed down. They was like, okay, he didn't really, uh, he's from another kingdom. Okay. And uh, my, my good friend, Count Jonathan comes comes up, or Duke Jonathan comes up. He goes, "What's going on?" I like I kind of he starts getting all huffy. Like, hey, Jack, I think I've got it all settled. Settled. <laughs> and and the the marshal goes, "You know, we could kick you off the field today, but you you handle yourself right." And I think we've settled it. As soon as Jack heard they could kick me out of the field again, he went nuts. I almost had to pick him up and carry him away. Like, we're, we're done. We're done. You can't kick my friend. It's like okay. carrying him off. Like we're, we're done. We're done, Jack. Like, like, yeah, I've got it. I've got this, Jack. It's like, it's like I, yeah, your friend kind of maneuvered at it. We're, we're safe. Don't get all wild. So, so that was probably the last time we got in trouble. Like, so don't. So 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 I know now. Don't knock the bow out of their hand. Just stick them really hard with your spear. I just kind I of. Tackle them. Them. I'm good at tackling people. Yeah, it was like, you know, I was like, wow, I got in trouble for being nice. I'm like, okay, I kind of, kind of smile. I'm like, eh, whatever. But I think the moral of the story was instead of to uh, argue and fight with them and, you know, just like, yeah, I did this. I didn't realize it, you know, just like, hey, you know, and if they said, well, you don't get to fight anymore. I was like, well, I guess I should have known them a little better. But uh, since I was nice and polite and did it, you know, they said, okay, you understand. Let's, let's drive on. So, you know, I think most of the time we, have interactions with people in those divisions. If you're just nice and polite and use the honey, um, things will go your way. So. Yeah, well, 100%. I think people forget that. I think people are too quick to get angry mm -hmm. in a lot of cases. Yeah, and, it, and it's like, uh, the, the funniest thing is like, I knew when they called me your grace, it was like, oh, this is bad. <laughs> <laughs> they pulled out the title, I'm in trouble. Yeah, I, I I normally don't get, live on the title. I normally like you, you know I actually get my attention quicker calling me Mark than anything else. And, and, and they're talking to me now. I better look. So. <laughs> so uh so I know your favorite story was from Penzik, but is that your favorite out of Kingdom event, or is there a different one? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty much the, the, had a good time at that. Uh, I, I really enjoyed going to Penzik as king. I would, been like twice as king and and uh you know probably knighting michael bedford might not have been my smartest move i've ever made but uh <laughs> probably didn't make me any friends but earlier on when i went to Penzik, we stayed at michael bedford's camp and he had the he was the best host ever and he was a great fighter and it's like i could i could tell you all kinds of crazy stories of my, michael bedford but me and my buddies like we all got together and we were like, like oh, we're forever king, we're knighting him. So I went to I went to Penzik and uh, he was there, and all the kings uh, decided that we're going to knight Michael. And uh, I was the only one from Eatonville that could actually do it. So if you'll look, we have a lantern that's in our OP getting knighted. <laughs> Michael Bedford. <laughs> nice. so we called the board to make sure we could do it, you know, so we wouldn't get in trouble. And uh, so we got got knighted at Grand Court, and so that that was pretty interesting. Later on, you know, being being not a, a very wise mid twenty year old guy, not knowing that 
that would make me a lot of friends or a lot of enemies. <laughs> it made me many friends, but it made me a lot of enemies I didn't even know. <laughs> so I would tell people like, maybe when you're, you know, a West Coast guy, you don't get involved in politics from the East Coast. So I would tell people that, you know. Solid. You know, it's like, you know, like, you know, it's like people from my new East Coast, like, oh, they're not talking very good about you. It's like, what do I do? I'm a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> well you just like knighted their most hated guy it's like oh well okay you don't you don't realize things, you don't realize things like when you're in your mid-20s now being much older i was like i, I could see the ramifications of uh actions mm -hmm. like that so yeah i guess when you start talking about it, you do have a lot of stories i just got to think about them yeah it's not surprising so the super heavy question for the evening are you ready oh say that one more time the super heavy question for the evening. What does it mean to you to be a peer? Oh, what does it mean to me to be a peer? Well, I take being a peer pretty seriously. Um, you, you need to act in a certain way, you know. You need to show, you need to be competent in whatever, whatever field uh, you got your peer, peerage in, you know. Uh, I can mostly, mostly talk about being a knight, and so, when I uh, look at look at anybody being a knight, one of the first things I look at is how competent they are in their, their primary skill and as a knight and is uh, being a fighter. And, uh, and and my my gauge on a fighter is in his period. So if he's gonna be a peer, it means you're gonna be equal. Is can he go 50-50 with the average average knights? You know, if he goes 40-60, that's probably good enough. And I, I, and I don't, and I don't really want to, I'm get, um, gauging the guys or the girls. I don't say how good he does against the Dukes. I, I literally mean, how good does he fight against the other Knights? Does he, is he, is he the, their peer in a fight? You know, and if I, you know, if they are, okay, well that, that, that qualifies. Okay. They got the competence level. And so when I was King, I, I, I took that, that, uh, that view to the, you know, had to make laurels, had to make pelican. I took that view to like the laurels, like, so if you were a painter, are you as good as the average paint, you know, at, at that level, you know? And if you were, you know, if you were going to be a pelican, were you up to snuff just, you know, when, when all the other pelicans, did you do that about that amount of service, you know, all that hard work that the pelicans have to do? Did you do that? You know, and it's like, and so I kind of took that approach is like, okay, you, you need to be their equal, you know, no, you don't have to, you're not going to be as, as equal as the, the, the high level guys, but it's the, the average, the average peer of that thing. Are, are you, are you to their, their, their ability? And so, so, you, so I'm looking at be a peerage. Yes. Are you, are you to that, that ability? And if you're not, well, then we got to work with you. And then, then there are, you know, what I try not to get to it is the personalities. When I'm looking at peerages, you know, it's like because I, I personally voted for people I haven't liked, and it's like because I knew, you know, you ha you have to take your emotions out of it. Just because I don't like them doesn't mean their their ability is not there, their skills are where they need to be. You know, just because we don't mesh doesn't mean I should vote no. You know, so I when I'm looking at a peer, I try to take their personalities out. I try not to look at their backgrounds too much. You know, but uh, you know. I, I do like to make sure they're kind of a good upstanding person, you know, not screwing people over and doing bad things type stuff, you know, but uh, so, and I think we, you know, in general, if we take people's personalities out of it, it, it sure helps a lot. And, and it take away a little, a little of the bitterness, you know, of people, well, I tried so hard and I do all this stuff and it's like, you know, but nobody likes them. It's like, I think we need to do a little better job of, uh, well, Here's the blunt truth. This is why they don't like you. You know, and it's like, you know, take it or not. It, constructive, constructive criticism is is good when people do it with the right intent. You know, so. Yeah. But, yeah. And if you, if you notice, if we're good mentors to all, you know, these people trying to be peers, it will help them in their real world. You know, you know, it's like achieving any any goal in your life helps you in every other goal achieved anywhere else. That feeling success and confidence bleeds over to everything we do. So, if we're raised, if we're producing peers, um, they should be getting 
they should be building their confidence in, in, in multiple aspects of their life. And, and that'll help them, you know? So I worked with a lot of, a lot of the young men fighting. And as they got better, I've, I've noticed like their confidence level in general life just would go up, you know? It's like, and you, and you can see, and it, you know, and then they'll start asking the other question. It's like, since I've been a manager my damn near whole life, they'll ask me like, why have these problems with these people? It's like, well, we'll do this and do this and do this. And like, oh, that stuff works. But uh, <laughs> so build, building a confidence in them also. So I think I got off the, 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 the little subject a little bit. But, uh, not really. No, not really at all. I mean, I think that's one of the telling things is a lot of peers, you know, like you look at who they were when they were younger and the fact that they were on that track uh, set them up better for uh, adulthood. Yeah. Yep. I'd also tell the peers, it's like, don't tell your, you know, you know, just, just because you're the peer in the SCA doesn't mean you're going to get the next job. But uh, it, but, it, but it helps people. It just general confidence and, and building success in people builds more success. Success success feeds on itself. So, you know, and but kind of that's kind of how I train the guys is uh, I, I I will set them up for positions where they'll have success and get confidence and for the likely goal so they'll get their you know become good and get their peerage and everything else but you'll be, you'll notice as, as they as they progress and get more confident all of a sudden they start getting more confident in other areas of their life so yeah sure, sure. so what would you like to see from the peers to improve the SCA? That we're that they're not doing now. Uh, I would like to see them be a little more active. You know, I, I I think this goes right into what I said earlier. The thing I didn't like is with most of the people my age, you know, we're all peers, and they're not there. There are a lot of we did it this way, and they're not showing anybody. They're, they're just they're they're more complaining that the new guys aren't doing it their way than actually taking it by the hand and showing them. So I, I would like to see the peers be a little more active, you know. Um, there's there's no reason for you know, life life is busy, but if it's gonna be your club and you're gonna be active in it, you should be, you know, help building it up. You know, I've of other clubs and that that's the model of every club I've ever been in, is like let's keep building the club up. So if we have, you know, especially peers that aren't help building the club up, it's like, hey, what's going on here? And and I do do understand with the people that they have family, they have jobs and all this stuff. So it's it's your we're going to, this is your vacation time, your off time is the SCA. That goes along with, if you're not having fun, we need to investigate why. So. So we're gonna, yeah. For now, we need to get on that. <laughs> well, you guys, you're, you're very active, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have anything? I do not have any more questions, do you? So, well, I mean, I just enjoy talking with Mark, so I could make stuff up all night long, but he, he's probably not going to want that. But who's been your most rewarding student? Who's been our most rewarding student? Um, I don't know if I had a, a particular person because everybody's different and everybody gives a, a, a you know, you get, you get something different from everybody. So I, I don't have to have a, I, I would, I would, I think it would downgrade everybody if I had a, a, a you know, if, I don't know yeah. if that's a good answer or not, but that's a low everybody, problem. everybody, I, I feel rewarded from everybody in a different way, you know, and it's like, uh, I'll tell, uh, there's nothing better than seeing, uh, I'll tell, I'll tell you a story now. I, I just got one. So I fought in that last crown tournament and the most rewarding thing in the whole tournament was seeing the person's dad that won smile after he won. That made my whole day because I could see right over his shoulder. I could see his dad in the background and his smile on his dad's face to me as a father was just priceless. It made my whole event, probably made my whole year. And it's like, that was really cool. You know, so, so that, that's a good story, you know, and it's like, wow, you know, a dad being that proud of a son and you getting to see it, that's a, that doesn't get to, that doesn't happen too often. So, yeah. so I was like, uh, I don't know if anybody else saw it. I, I might just have God might have just put me in the right place where I could see it. And go, all right. And it was a, uh, it, it, it just made me really happy to see his, how happy that father was. It's like, wow, yeah. this is a great day. He's a good dude. Yeah, his dad's a 
good guy too. Yeah, they're, they're they're wonderful people, and it's like a, I really like them too. But it's just seeing the smile on that man's face it was like it was priceless to me. I'll, I'll probably never forget it. It's like wow. Yeah. I would say I, like for me, like training the. The most rewarding thing for me is when I see the drive in an individual that I'm working with, that I see that personal drive. Because you, I, you know, at this point, you can't, you can't train that. That's the one piece that you can't put into an individual. They actually have to have it. But one of the things I've noticed different in the the the, the younger folks now is my generation. I would say we're a lot more aggressive and a lot more athletic you know it was like most of most of most of the guys i they're aggressive they they played sports they did some kind of karate or or did something you know and most of them played D D too so <laughs> so so they were all the the D guys that did sports too so basically all the guys i hung out with now i'm, I'm seeing a lot of the um, younger folks we get uh, men and women that uh they don't have an athletic background. And so you, you have to teach them a lot more. It's like, like, you know, like I had good footwork the day I started and now we have to teach them a lot more footwork. And so that, that was one of the things I've, I've noticed that, uh, you know, they don't, they don't have the background. So you, so you have to devise a little different training technique for them. And the other thing I, I've noticed is, and I, I think it's a, a positive thing. And I, I, I ran into it in the army also was, my favorite fighter practice, we have a lot of females and uh, that come to fight. And uh, they do pretty good. You know, it's like, uh, it, I, you know, it's like, I, I know I, I probably had a little different view um, when I was younger, but I had a female squire, like one of my first squires. But uh, but the girls, you know, they, they come and they bring it. And that's all I ask. And uh, I did read an interesting book, uh, the, Ar the Armored Rose, which I thought well, I put in my yeah. library of uh, management techniques. And uh, I thought it was pretty well written. I, I would say, if you're gonna train women how to fight, you should uh, read that. And you may not agree with it all, but there's a lot of, a lot of uh, good nuggets in it for, for training. And so I'd give that person, whoever wrote the book, I don't remember the author's name, but that was really, really well written. And if you're going to be a trainer, and you're especially going to train with females, there were some excellent nuggets in it. I was like, wow, uh, I could have used that when I was uh, back commanding women. <laughs> there, there were some good nuggets in it, you know, men and women are different. But so what, uh, so I'm happy to see, you know, like well, last night we had uh, four females fighting and five men. So it's like, uh, that, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, more girls fight the marriage as far as I'm concerned, and so I do have a little different view, I think, on the whole archery thing and everybody else. Uh, it's like I, I don't really, I don't really care what you do as long as you participate. You know, if you don't want a sword fight, I need some archers, and uh, so come be an archer. You know, I, I know my brethren; they'll, they'll like they're gonna they'll harass me for it. But <laughs> if that's all you want, if that's all you, if that's the participation you want to do, that's great with me. You know, go have fun. If it makes you feel better, all the way back from when I was barren, I told all of the archers if they needed a safe place, come fight with me. Yeah. I would protect them. Yeah, it's like I would prefer if all the archers on my side would just follow me around and shoot the yeah. other archers. It's exactly. Like, yeah, it's like just kill all the other archers. They keep shooting at me. I don't like it. <laughs> oh well, like for the last two Astraeas, I've come up with like a hit list and passed them out to the archers. Like these are the people I want you to take out. <laughs> I think I felt I was on the other side of that pain from the other side. It's like <laughs> my friends started had to stand right next to me and she's like, "Man, you're just like an archer magnet." It's like, yeah, I don't like it either. <laughs> so, but so so I have that view. It's like, you know, and and uh, I, I see one one household that I'm kind of envious of is the horseman from Kaid. How they they've integrated, uh, you know, the, the 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 folks that are really big, and so they made them archers. And then then I, I fought with them, and I was rather impressed how this like five foot two girl was killing more folks than I was. It's like, and well, they regimented too. They train all the time. Oh, she was an outstanding shot. Is like, uh, hit that guy with her right in the face, forty yards away. Like, dang, 
I'm glad you're on so, my side. Mark, did you know that I started with that group? Yes, I did. Um, uh, you and Colin did. Yep. Yep. It's like, uh, but 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 I, I'm rather that that unit over there uh, impresses me because you know they actually maneuver with their archers and, mm -hmm. and you know they integrated them really well, yeah. which which I think uh, wouldn't be it'd be pretty pretty good for us to do the same thing if we're going to have them, but. But I, more, the more the merrier, as far as I'm concerned. I, I will tell you the, the funniest thing I saw was that it was at Talon Crescent, and like I was in the back talking with the commanders on what we were doing, and the battle had started. It was like a big open field, and the armies had stopped nowhere near in range, not you know, not not even near spear range yet. And the Alexander, the head of the horsemen, right. with his big scutum shield, stepped you know like out into the middle with three archers behind him. And he just stood there and blocked, and then they would just lean out and fire, and then duck back behind him. And I'm sitting there watching, like, what? Why is anybody doing anything? So I ended up running him down and making them scatter. Yeah, Alexander's a good dude, uh, but but that, that, that's kind of what the you know it goes right along with that. Everybody can participate. Everybody can uh, get yeah. into it. And uh, one I of the things we should... like what it adds. Now, my, my, most of my friends, they're going to like, oh, you love those archers. <laughs> I like my archers. I think it, I, I like, I like what it adds to the ambiance of the fighting fields. I mean, you should have your head on a swivel. Well, you know, if we're, if we're you know, trying to recreate uh, medieval battles, archers were definitely there. Well, yeah. yeah. And they were definitely, missileers were, you know, you can, all the way back in the Greek times, you, and before, you can tell missileers were definitely in the battles. And so you had to pay attention to them and you had to employ them to, to be effective. And so that's why I like it. It, it, it adds a, a little more sense of reality to the, the fight. And it's like, well, it gives you more tactics. As, as somebody building the battle tactics for your unit, I mean, it gives you a whole other dimension to your fight. It, it does. It's like, I don't mind being a target, I guess, but. <laughs> I don't mind being a target as long as I got archers to shoot back. That's it. And so. Uh, I remember our last war, I did realize that uh, you'd given the other side some of our archers. Yeah, they like, they kept coming up and like, yeah, we got you. It's like, you know, we're on the same king. You don't have to shoot me. <laughs> I might have told them I was the only one they weren't allowed to shoot. <laughs> so it was, it was all good fun in nature. It's like, you know, if I was in, I probably shot me too. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, and that was that that hospitality you were talking about. Uh, we had them outnumbered, and it, I wanted to give them some success. To that, uh, the, the other army some success to spur their their day. Makes everybody stay more fun. I, I think I think that's exactly where we need to be. We need to fight hard, but to make sure everybody has fun. Yeah. If that means giving the other side um, enough guys to be be competitive, because. It's, it's not fun if we just run them over and half our guys get to fight. And it's, it's that competitive thing again. The other side, I want the other side to be just as competitive we are. Then it's a real win. It's like when you beat them. It's not this, oh, uh, well, you know, I, I, beat, I beat my little sister or my little brother. It's like, oh, okay. That, well, you, you, you want it to come down to the, the hand, last handful of guys. Because then the, those last handful of guys actually get to be heroes because their whole army got to watch them finish the day and Yes, the mo the more hero experiences we can produce is the the better the day is. So, but I, I thought that was outstanding. Um, you know, it's like I'm giving those guys that whatever makes makes the battle more fun. Like you're not like really dying. So, <laughs> right. exactly. Well, it's I always like, laugh too when people get all fussy during a res battle. I'm like, it's a res battle. Go go res and come back. It's okay. The arrows aren't that bad. Res, res battles crack me up now because it used to be my favorite battle. Now it's my my most distasteful battle. <laughs> it happens when you get old. It's now like big time. <laughs> I was like, oh, I only want to kill the guy one time. Now he's coming back and he has a big smile. He's coming after me, and I'm starting to get tired. <laughs> it's like, yeah. So it's like I've, I've noticed my my views on things getting in my fifties have changed from my twenties. Oh yeah. Res like, oh, we can't wait. Now it's like, oh, really? Do we got a res? Like, okay. <laughs> How long is this res battle? <laughs> it's like, it's like, who's coming up? This should only be like 15 minutes total. That's awesome. Well, my dear. Yes. 
think that's it for the evening. I think so. I want to thank you for your time. It's been a pleasure getting to talk with you and hang out. Oh, any, any time. So I, I, had, I had a very good time too. Hopefully I answered your questions in a good way. Oh, you did. They, you, did, you, did ask, you did ask some stumpers. It was like, oh, that's well, you, you can't make it a, it can't be too easy, right? We're trying to learn about who you are. So you got to ask some tough questions. But uh, I, I, I think this is a very good thing you're doing and, uh, you know, gives, gives people insight of the people around them. So, and I think that will lead into people being easier to work with people. You know, maybe I had a nugget somebody else could listen to and go, oh, I can have that. Maybe, you know, you interview somebody else, I can hear a nugget. And we're, well, I'll integrate that. So getting all this knowledge spread around will probably help. Oh, yeah. Well, and I wanted people to see that you're not as scary as you seem so that maybe they won't be afraid to come talk to you. Well, you know, that scary thing goes two ways. Sometimes it's good. <laughs> But uh, no, I, I would I'd, I'd much prefer them to know that I'm uh, very approachable. They can come up and talk to me at any time. It's like uh, uh, a multitude of subjects. I, you know, I'm just they should never be afraid to come up and talk to me. I always have time for people. I might have to say like like my mother called like three minutes for this. Hey, hey mom, I'll call you back in a, in a few minutes. But so uh, uh, you know, we, we should everybody should. Uh, as you go up and up, up ranks and stuff or thing, you should make time available for, for people, you know. They, they didn't ask a question, you know. Normally, they have to grab the courage to go and approach somebody anyway. Yeah. At, least, at least I did, you know. And, and so, you know, if they grab the courage, they, they you know, you should, you should respect that and at least give them a, a little bit of your time. It's definitely yeah. something we try to do as crown, especially when we're when we when we are on the throne, is to make sure that people know don't be afraid to come talk to us. Like a lot of events, we actually told people like when we were at events out of our normal area, you know, like up north, like hey, if you don't if you've never met us, come introduce yourself after court. Mm -hmm. We want to know you. Well, I would I would just tell you too, you you do a really good job, and so I've always been impressed with the job you do, and so what I would like to see is. Uh, you're more of the example I would uh, I would use you more than an example that I'd ever use myself. So you uh, you you do a good job. And so people should watch what you do, and especially especially uh, people that uh, think they're going to win crown or, or their their fighter is going to win crown. They should look at you as an example of what what's goes on. And so I don't just say that because you're king. I tell you that that's what I think. And. Uh, <laughs> You know, I've, I've seen it done well, I've seen it done for, but you're, you would be an example I would uh, direct people to, to emulate. So Thank you very much. So. Well, I don't know how to follow that. I don't know. I do not know how to follow that. <laughs> oh, I got the king queen. <laughs> <laughs> well, my friend, until we see each other again, let's say good night. Yep. All right. I'll, next time we uh, go to fighter practice, I'll see yes. you. <laughs> Good night. Good night.